find out in Marvel Comics. Hello everyone, and Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX357, your friendly neighborhood 1980s G.I. Joe toy reviewer. And today I'll be taking a look at the old Marvel comic title of G.I. Joe, issues 31 through 41, originally published in uh, January to November of 1985, or here as we're printed in uh, the G.I. Joe trade paperback of volume 4. Here I have the uh, old Marvel comic version of the trade paperback, which was uh, published in 2002. But just a few years ago, IDW picked up the license to do these trade paperbacks and they retitled them Classic G.I. Joe. And that would have been the same exact same thing, volume four again, with the same amount of stuff on the inside. Now, I do have to say that Larry Hama, who did most of the um, comic writing uh, for the G.I. Joe comic book, seemed to have um, started to have a bit of trouble shoving in um, the 12 characters per year into what is basically a very ongoing, very personal story. And I can understand that. And quite frankly, he does it so, uh, he does it rather well. But, I mean, it's a very hard thing to do when you're constantly presented with characters to be, and not only characters, but vehicles and weapon systems to be shoved into your story. However, this is a collection of very important uh, issues for the G.I. Joe universe, such as the creation of Cobra Island, a bit of a sneak peek into how Cobra was formed. We have um, some fan favorite characters being introduced for the first time, like Flint and Lady J, as well as Storm Shadow teaching Billy in the ways of the Force. I mean the ways of Ninja. Ninja. Issue 31 is titled All Fall Down. In this issue, Destro and Firefly take the new undercover Crimson Guard Fred Broca to the High Sierras to check out a possible lead to the new G.I. Joe headquarters. What they find instead is Snake Eye's cabin being watched over by Spirit and Airborne. This is the first appearance of Spirit, here noticeably called Spirit Iron Knife, possibly to differentiate him from Will Eisner's comic character. Issue 32 is titled The Mountain. After the intense battle at Snake Eye's cabin, the Softmaster arrives to render aid to both sides. Cobra Commander prepares for a big Springfield rally when Storm Shadow returns and explains how he escaped Joe Custody, which was in, uh, originally in issue 25. Secretly, the Baroness and Major Blood train Billy to assassinate Cobra Commander during that, that rally. This is the first appearance of Rakondo, Blowtorch, Ripcord, Lady J, and Spirit's Eagle, which isn't specifically named. Fred Broca actually dies in this issue and is replaced by another Fred for the undercover Cobra family. Issue 33 is titled Celebration. The Joes celebrate the completion of the new pit and send Spirit, Blowtorch, and Ripcord out to get decorations. But while out, Spirit spots the duplicate Fred and the three Joes give chase with the help of Bongo the Balloon Bear. During the Springfield rally, Billy attempts to kill Cobra Commander, but Destro stops him and makes a surprising discovery about the boy. Here, we learn that Billy is Cobra Commander's son, though B Billy previously thought of his father and Cobra Commander as two entirely different and separate people. Bongo the Bloom Bear makes her first appearance, and the relationship with Ripcord starts. Issue 34 is titled Shakedown. In this issue, new electronic features have been installed in Ace's Sky Striker, so he asks Lady J to be his co-pilot on a test flight. At the same time, Wild Weasel wants the Baroness to get up to speed with the upgraded Rattlers, and the two craft clash over a populated city. Basically, this is a standalone story, and pretty much the best look at Ace and Wild Weasel's characters that we actually ever get throughout the entire uh, old Marvel comic run. It has a lot of symmetry and fun technical detail on both craft. This issue does address the Baroness is supposed to be a more than competent pilot as well. Issue 35 is titled Dreadnoughts on the Loose. 
In this issue, Buzzer and the Dreadnoughts take the absent Zartan's special holographic motorcycle on a joyride which includes clashing with Breaker, Clutch and Rock and Roll on the road, as well as destroying some fighter jets after sneaking onto an airbase. After Buzzer gets captured by the Three Joes, Zartan comes to collect the remaining Dreadnoughts, but winds up picking up a stowaway with ninja-like escape skills. This is an interesting all Dreadnought misadventure, but this issue is really more just a, a setup point for other plots which will diverge later on in the future issues. Interestingly enough, the cover is drawn by John Byrne. Issue 36 is titled All the Ships at Sea. The Joes aboard the USS Jane and the Killer Whale investigate a Cobra operation in the South Atlantic, which turns into a huge firefight at sea. Meanwhile, Snake Eyes and Scarlet are on leave when they are spotted by the second undercover Crimson Guard Fred, who attempts to kidnap Scarlet. In this issue, we have the first appearance of the Asp, the Hydrofoils, which are not referred to as mores yet and, and are not piloted by lampreys yet, and the USS Flag. Also in this issue, the USS Jane sinks, we have the first full appearance of the MMS, which is not operated by Hawk, sadly enough. And this is the first time that Snake Eyes uses a rubber mask to be out in public. And as also the first time we have actually a Crimson Guard referring to himself as Fred II. Issue 37 is titled Twin Brothers. In this issue, Ripcord, Blowtorch, and Gung Ho return to the Arbco Brothers Circus to pay back a favor to Bungo the Balloon Bear, where they're ambushed by the Crimson Guard commanders, and new Joes, Flint, and Footloose come to the, re the rescue. Uh, this is the first appearance of the Crimson Guard commanders Tomax and Zaymon, as well as the first appearance of Flint and Footloose. Also we have the first appearances of the Ferret ATV, and the Armadillo mini, mini tank. Again, the his tank driver uniform is used incorrectly, this time as a stand-in for the still unfinalized Crimson Guard uniforms. And here we learn that Bongo's real name is revealed to be Candy. Issue 38 is titled Judgments. In this issue, Billy is being interrogated by the Cobra High Command, but will not give up his co-conspirators. Storm Shadow makes a surprising decision concerning Billy. Meanwhile, part of the Joe team head to Sierra Gordo to meet up with Rakondo and once again rescue Dr. Adele Burkhardt. The remaining Joe team members check out a very local Cobra hideout and discover something shocking. This is the first appearance of the Sierra Gordo native Tukaro's tribesmen. Also the first appearance of the Vamp Mark II although shown with the incorrect rear weapons, as well as the finalized Cobra Crimson Guard uniform. Billy's flashback clearly shows how his father started the Cobra organization, and the Joes pull a Crimson Guard uniform out of a closet in Candy's father's house, a nice nod to the action figure file card. Issue 39 is titled, Walk Through the Jungle. In this issue, the Joes in Sierra Gordo implement their plan to rescue Dr. Burkhart, but there are casualties along the way. Storm Shadow trains Billy in the ways of martial arts, and the Joes interrogate Candy because of her father's Cobra affiliation. This is the first appearance of Storm Shadow's Water Tower hideout. In issue 40, titled Hydrofoil, the Joes head to the Gulf of Mexico to investigate an undersea Cobra bunker. The Joes attack the bunker, but that is all part of Candy's father's plan. Meanwhile, Candy and Buzzer are being transported to a proper military police facility. There is an art error in which Snake Eyes is still on the tactical battle platform when he should be on the killer whale. This is the first appearance of the tactical battle platform, called the Transportable Air Sea Base here, first appearance of Shipwreck. Barbecue, the Lampreys, and Candy's Crimson Guard father is finally named here. He is Professor Apple, which makes Candy's full name Candy Apple. Ah ha ha, very funny Larry Hamill. 
Also, this is the first appearance of the sunken oil tanker slash Cobra base, the Arbco Star. And finally, issue 41, titled Strategic Diplomacy. The Joad's attack on the Cobra undersea base ruptures the fault line and sends a chunk of the sea floor to the surface. The Joes attempt to drive the Cobras off this man-made island. In this issue, Cobra Island forms for the first time and is a fully recognized state by the end of this issue. The Stingers make their first appearance in the background and his tank drivers are finally shown driving his tanks. The cover art shows Snake Eyes wearing his 1985 style visor on an otherwise 1982 style uniform although the interior art does show him wearing the 1982 style consistently, as he won't change that for a few issues yet. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video, and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.